happen. Today, we have a very special guest joining us. Dennis Kucinich is a former mayor of Cleveland, Ohio, and he's running again. Welcome to the show, Dennis. How are you doing? Chrisar, it's great to be with you, and I look forward to our chat. Definitely. Well, first thing i got to ask you, you got into politics at a real young age. I when did. most kids these days are playing video games or got their John Madden you know, hand controller, you were out there actually trying to impact your community. What inspired you to start at such a young age? Well, you know, I grew up in the city of Cleveland, the oldest of uh, seven. My parents never owned a home. We were renters, had trouble finding a place to rent. We moved around a lot by the time I was 17. We lived in about 21 different places, including some cars. Uh, that experience uh, seared into my awareness the importance of trying to help other people in similar circumstances. So I told myself, Early on, that if I ever got anywhere in life, I was going to remember where I came from. I had the opportunity to get involved in the community at a very early age. I ran for city council when I was 20. Second time, two years later, I got elected by 16 votes in a recount. And what inspired me is a desire to be of service, to help other people. That's a unique trait. We don't see that too much anymore. We always hear that uh, they have a predetermined outcome of what they want to change. It isn't what the people want. It is what their vision as a politician is for change. So at a young age, you're sitting here 23, you get elected, and then it wasn't long until you became the youngest mayor in Cleveland, Ohio history. Well, actually, at the time, in uh, 1977, I was the youngest person elected mayor of a big city anywhere in America. So it was a, uh, it was a distinction that the press accorded, uh, but actually I made it very clear on election night that I wasn't seeking to be the youngest, I was seeking to be the best, to truly make government work for everyone and uh, to uh, be an agent for positive change representing the people. Uh, what I found out, Kristan, is that the... Uh, uh, is that I ran head on into kind of a crony capitalism where the banks and a utility monopoly actually conspired to throw the city of Cleveland into a default over loans I hadn't even taken out. And they tried to force me to sell the city's municipal electric system to the bank and the, uh, and the uh, utility monopoly's uh, benefit. So it was quite a battle. It involved uh, assassination plots. It involved uh, uh, corporate espionage, sabotage, efforts to ruin the credit of the city, all over this fight over uh, this desire of this utility monopoly to gobble up Cleveland's uh, electric system. That almost sounds like a Tom Clancy book there that you have. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I, I'm hopeful that someday they'll use the uh, comparison and say this sounds like a Kucinich book. <laughs> but um, right now I've been talking to people, and they've compared the story to Chinatown, to the Godfather meets Mr. Smith goes to Washington. Uh, it certainly has the kind of innate intrigue and danger of those um, uh, stories. And at the same time, it's all documented. It's all true. And it was a young person getting involved in politics and getting elected at age 23, then becoming mayor at age 31. And I walk the reader through this experience of discovering these various types of corruption that were, were happening all around. And uh, I, you know, because I didn't want anything, I couldn't be bought off. And so I was able to accurately reflect the concerns of the people who lived in the community. So, you know, this story, the division of right and power is actually a cautionary tale about what happens if people are not involved in their government, how government can go astray, how government can work for the interest of a few at the expense of the many. And we should mention for our viewers and watchers and onlookers that uh, you have that new book that is out, uh, Division of Light and Power. And uh, that, that, I mean, there it is. Like, if you guys want to know what goes on behind the curtains, that's a great book to pick up. 
make sure that you guys are checking that out as well. You know, at age 23 and then 31, what's something that was like a surprise to you when you got elected? Because I, I'm 42, and if I got elected, I still don't think I'd know exactly what goes on if, you know, once I had the job. Were there any new things that you learned while you were? No, I mean, the, the, the lies that people try to pass up as truth. And once I understood what happened there in Cleveland through the uh, chaotic experience and a very painful experience of standing up against these uh, interest groups and challenging this crony capitalism, once I understood what was going on, that equipped me years later to be a member of the United States Congress and challenge the lies that were being told to take us into war against Iraq. And so, you know, when you know, once you really understand the kind of games that are played with the truth, how people try to not just stretch it, but they, you know, uh, pound it into a different shape. They try to reconstruct a social reality to meet the needs of, of you know, in the case of Iraq and to meet the needs of war profiteers. And so, you know, I, my, my lesson in Cleveland becomes important for everyone who wants to know how does government really work? What actually goes on inside? What are the interest groups that are competing for the attention of government? What are the interest groups that try to control the government for their own narrow needs? Where is government wrong? You know, where, where does it fail? Where, uh, where can it do better? I mean, these are all themes that are brought into play in the, in, in the web of intrigue that is the division of light and power, the book. And so I've had the, the privilege of writing it started a long time ago, but finally delivered the story uh, early uh, in this uh, year. And uh, I can tell you a few weeks ago when the first copy arrived at my house, I was elated to finally be able to see the finished product because this was a, a story that took a long time to write and document. So let's fast forward a little bit because you were the youngest mayor in Cleveland history and a lot has changed in the last, let's say, 45 years. We now have the Patriot Act, which doesn't seem patriotic at all. If it wasn't for the Patriot Act, artificial intelligence wouldn't even know how to deal with us because they need that social credit score to identify individuals. It's just so deep when it comes to the Patriot Act and a violation of American liberties and freedoms. Uh, what, what would you say are some of the big focal points and things that have changed for the worse or better in the last 45 years since you first started running? Well, there's a degree of polarization and hyperpartisanship that does not serve this country, and you know it's a it's a real it's a it's a real challenge to be able to hold up our our democracy, um, and also the influence of money is ever more great, and you know it's important for people to work with each other and both sides of you know both sides of the aisle communicate. I mean that's what I was able to do with the help of people like Ron. Paul and Walter Jones, we work closely together to make sure that uh, we exchange views and occasionally we work together, particularly to try to stop uh, these awful wars that, uh, you know, put our men and women, uh, put their lives at risk and resulted in the deaths of perhaps a million innocent Iraqis and the waste of six trillion at least of T per trillion of American tax dollars. So when you see the kind of coalitions that we were able to put together and the leadership we brought, uh, you could see how today it is urgent for people to find a way to work together to protect the interests of all the American people. And, and you know, this book that I've written, uh, Kristan, is not uh, slanted towards liberals, towards conservatives, straight down the line. It's about the truth. And the truth is the truth. And, you know, we're told you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Well, in my community, people are finally going to be free of all the lies that were told over the years. But the American people who are being misled by government at every level, through this book, The Division of Right and Power, are going to be given a chance to see how it's possible to be able to understand when something's wrong and, and to find a way to write it, to empower oneself and, and citizens to be able to seek the truth in, in the interest of everyone. So yeah, I was really happy to be able to finally complete this book and the response has been so powerful that I now understand that I was writing not just for the city of Cleveland, 
but I was writing for the country. Well, now you've decided to uh, gear up and give it another run. I saw that you recently announced that you are running again as a candidate for mayor of Cleveland. So what are some of the things that you hope to change about the current establishment in the city? Same thing. Just make government work for the people. Uh, you know, do things like uh, lower utility rates, make it possible for people to hold on to a little bit more of their money, eliminate waste, fraud, and abuse in government. First time I was mayor, I was able to cut city spending by 18% without reducing services, by eliminating waste, fraud, and abuse. I mean, that's how much waste there is in government. When Ron Paul and I served in Congress together, you know, there was a, the Department of Defense admitted to a trillion dollars in accounts they couldn't reconcile. Today, it's many trillion. You know, th this idea of government can work, but in whose interest is it working? And when it's not working, it's up to all of us to insist that it be honest, that it have integrity, that it doesn't waste taxpayers' dollars. So, you know, that's that's what I'm about. Now, our, our website, for those who are interested, uh, kucinich.com, and follow what's happening in Cleveland. The big issue right now is crime. Cleveland has one of the highest per capita crime rates in America. Uh, you know, murders, ag uh, aggravated uh, assault, felonious assault, shootings. We just one weekend, uh, a recent weekend. We had 39 people shot in a recent weekend. And, and you know, the people are afraid to go out of their homes. They can't be on their porch. They're afraid of their kids walking the street. They can't, they can't go to a gas station inside the city of Cleveland without worried about getting shot. I mean, we must address this crime issue. And so that's one of the issues I'm bringing to the fore in Cleveland. And again, anyone wants to find out about that campaign, go to kucinich.com, K-U-C-I-N-I-C-H.com, and you'll learn about what's being done to fight back in a big city. Well said, uh, Dennis. Uh, really impressive. And I think there's a lot of people out there that are looking for answers and they're really sick of the two-party establishment, the system that we have in place. And there doesn't really seem to be a big difference other than rhetoric nowadays. And, uh, you know, as a, I'm a protest uh, reporter, I've been in Kenosha, I was in Minneapolis, I was in D.C., and I've seen firsthand the destruction of our uh, local neighborhoods and the impact is had on the communities and the answer is difficult it, it's diverse and it, it's crazy to think that one person might have all the answers but yet there's so many people out there with so many opinions that you can collaborate and listen to the people and make a difference that's amazing thank you so much for joining us today Dennis Kucinich is our guest make sure you guys check out his website pick up his new book where can our viewers find your new book well you can find our, our new book on uh, just about any uh, local bookstore. If they don't have it, they'll order it for you. Uh, you can get it at Target, at um, Barnes & Noble, at Amazon. There's a whole list on our website called uh, Finney Avenue, F-I-N-N-E-Y, FinneyAvenueBooks.com. And so, you know, this spread the word about this book, because this book is really making a difference. And Chris Don, keep in mind, when I was elected mayor of Cleveland 44 years ago, I was elected as an independent. I defeated a Republican machine and a Democratic machine to get elected. <laughs> that's amazing. Uh, I think that's something we don't see so much anymore. It seems like independents are really drowned out by the current establishment. They almost make it improbable for independents to have a voice. So it, it, they force you into one of these two vehicles, either conservative or uh, progressive or liberal. How, how do we overcome this? Well, first of all, labels do not really describe who we are. You want to get to know someone, forget the labels. Forget liberal, conservative, Democrat, Republican. Forget independent. Forget green. Forget all of that. Get to know the person. That's what I try to do in Congress. And to be able to learn about people, to learn about them, what their hopes and dreams are, and about their families. And when you try that, you'll find out what I found out when I ran for president uh, the first time in 2004, and that is there is an underlying unity in America. But we have to reach out for it. We have to call it forward. We have to, uh, to help it become alive. We have to put it in motion. And these are, this is what United We Stand, I know, is about. And, and, you know, we really need an America that recognizes the diversity, isn't afraid of it, and at the same time strengthens 
are, uh, who we are as a result of our basic values that created this country. So, you know, when I, when I look at the country today, it's very sad. But I know, I know that America has this incredible capacity to be able to recover, to be able to heal itself, but only if we're involved. And that's why the division of right and power helps point the way for a new kind of civic activism, for informed civic activism, because unless you really do your homework and study, you're always going to be at, at you know, drifting. And the whole book is a, is a lesson on, on getting the facts, following those facts through to a conclusion, even if everyone else said you're wrong. Some of us have had that experience. You take a stand, people say, oh, you're wrong. Well, you know what? Uh, when, you're, when you're right, then you go ahead. And so you got to be sure of that. And so I've made every effort uh, in public service to, uh, to do the right thing, uh, to make sure that the people, people's concerns are represented, and to challenge those powers which, you know, many in politics would prefer not to have to meet head on. But it's, uh, it's resulted in this book, The Division of Light and Power, and I'm, I'm so grateful to be uh, with you, Kristan, uh, and communicating this message to all my friends at United We Stand. And it would be great if you could pass the word about this book. This book has the capacity to really change things. And thank you for this opportunity. Thank you so much for joining me today, Dennis. Make sure everyone checks out his website, kusenich.com. Uh, get information, research the book, pick it up. Support people that impact change in your local community. Research, listen to everyone, do your own research, and make sure that you are inspired to impact change, not just uh, nationally, but locally. These mayor uh, elections really matter for your local city and impact your community. Thank you so much for joining us today, and we'll make sure that and, ex and we're excited to see uh, your presentation virtually uh, for the United We Stand Festival in Cambria, uh, 4th of July weekend. I'm looking forward to participating. And, and thank you again, Kristan, for this opportunity to talk about the division of light and power. It's been a labor of love. And I'm finally grateful 